Hello, fellow questers! It is I, Aaron the Book Quester. So today I have this awesome book, and this the second book of the Longborough series, The Gift of Dark Hollow by Kieran Larwood, like always. Well, let's get get right up from the point where Podkin won here. The first of the first book of the series had ended. Let's get right on to it. Podkin, One Ear, Paz, Pook, and Crom, and the rest of the gang, they're holed up in a place called Dark Hollow. This is the map, and that's Dark Hollow. And the Gorm, the evil cats that have been taken over by Gormalach, who is the evil lord of, like, living iron metal. And Gorm are rabbit-like creatures who are covered with that iron and are basically evil. That's all you need to know. And they are trying to find the last of the resistance force. And well, they don't call themselves the resistance. I mean, but just saying, they're pe they are the they are the only rabbits that has the power to resist against the Gorm. For two gifts is located in Dark Hollow, the sickle. And this and the dagger, star claw, and the sickle of Bridget. Those are the gifts, gifts from the godness. And those holy things are currently two of them is located in Dark Hollow. And later on, Potkin One Ear, who has a taste of adventure, decides to follow Star Claw, his magic dagger that had been vibrating for a long time and had been leading him to a tomb. Underneath, underneath Dark Hollow, there he finds well a brooch, one of the gifts, the gift of Dark Hollow itself. And he later finds out that the gift, when when where when the wearer has the gift on and the moon is shining high in the sky, he can move through the shadows. That was the gift of Dark Hollow, one of the best. And most useful gifts that Potkin had encountered yet. And while you know experimenting with this new toy, he finds out that the two rabbits knew how to make weapons that could kill Gorm. Upon and he tells Chrome Chrom about this, and those two rabbits are well dragged up up to Chrom. Chrom says, "Well, well, tell us the story," and they say that. In Apple Cross, that's Dark Hollow. That's Apple Cross. At Apple Cross, there was the hammer, the hammer sure strike. That hammer, every time it made a new weapon, pounded the pounded the copper or whatever metal they were using into a new weapon. Every time it did that, it grew a little bit smaller, giving a part of itself to that weapon. And using sure strike, they found out that they could create. Weapons that could kill Gorm. Gorm killer weapons, they called them. And the Gorm killers, they were very useful, very powerful weapons. And they had made five Gorm killer arrow shafts. And using those arrows, the chief of Applecross had shot five Gorm dead. And all of those Gorm had been shot dead. And they knew now that their only hope was to find Sure Strike. Their only hope to fight back was to find the Great Sure Strike. So they, the Potkin, Crom, Mash, I think, and Pook and Paz, and a traveling bard named, well, named Yarrow, and Zarza, a bone dancer who moves like a cloud and fights like a demon, they go to Apple Cross. There, they have to find a priestess that who, who knows how to open up a secret tomb on Ancient's Island. You see that island in the middle of the lake? That's Ancient's Island. In the middle of it is a secret tomb, and in there is the, hidden is the Hammer of Sure Strike. And so, they journey to Applecross. They sneak in using a secret passage that was described to them by a fellow friend from Applecross. They go in, and they ask... Where asked the priestess who had been turned being turned into a gorm, but her connection to the goddess was strong and true, and she had survived long enough 
but only to delay the inevitable. She had stayed there, and she was barely alive. And she said with her last will how to open a beautiful little bri bridge from the mainland to the island. And also, how to, well, open the tomb. And they find out, and they open the tomb, and they get inside, and they find the hammer short strike. But one little thing that the, the priestess had forgot to mention, probably because her memory was fading and sure she was being taken over by the gorn, that the hammer sure strike, right before they could get to the hammer sure strike, there was a crevice, a crevice that almost no one could cross. And there was a bridge to it. And that bridge could only be opened by a key. And the potkin and his friends didn't have that key, which was an immense problem. But they had an acrobat. Acrobat with them. Acrobat with them. She was named Mash, and he jumped, and he got, <coughs> excuse me, the hammer shirt strike. And when they tried to get out, well, the corn was there. They were waiting, and Scramashank, the leader of the corn himself, were standing there, ready to kill Potkin. And then Potkin thought, wait, I have the bracelet, I have the brooch. The brooch that can make me travel through the shadows. And using that shadow, using that great weapon that he had, he teleported to the near shadow, rescued his friend, and using Paz, Paz, using the sickle that Bridget had borrowed to her, she used it to grow plants. Plants so fast and strong that it could wrap Gorm around and the Gorm could only helplessly struggle. Then Potkin and the rest of the gang, they escaped using the, using the secret bridge. And then Potkin, using the dagger star claw, cut the bridge device to make the Gorm trapped on the ancient island. And the rest of the remaining party goes back into Dark Hollow. And now they have hope. Hope that they could fight the Gorm. Hope that they could finally fight back. And that's the end of the story, guys. And there's a number three Potkin one here, so I'll get to that soon. Great book, guys. A must read. And, well, why you must read it? That's because you're missing out if you aren't. And, like always, your bookquester, Aaron the Bookquester.